Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is still James, still a fountain pen channel, even though I did some multi-pens and, and a little clickety-click video with my daughter on a ballpoint pen. But it's still about the fountain pens, and this is the one I want to share with you today. This is a first impressions review of the Pen BBS 500. You know that because you clicked on the thumbnail, right? And it is a spring-loaded, piston-filled, all of that harder to say than you think, fountain pen. And I like that. This one's a little bit different, and we're going to talk about the uh, the working end of the loading system here. But I do like this pen overall. I'm going to tell you that, so stick with me if you're interested in a really cool uh, fountain pen. It's kind of a large pen, and it is to me anyway, a striking pen. What I like about uh, Pen BBS's acrylic uh, or resin pens that are just like clear demonstrators or uh, colored acrylic demonstrators like this one is that it lets you get into the Pen BBS world a little bit less expensively. Now, their pens are very reasonably priced anyway, but even more when you get something like this Ocean uh, Demonstrator. And so I had not gotten any of those pens, though, because I really like those those swanky resins. But uh, I wanted to get one and see... Is the writing experience the same? Is the pen, you know, just as high quality? The answer to both those things, I'm going to give it to you right now. Yes. Uh, if you're looking for a less expensive way to get into pen BBS pens, this is an awesome way to go. Uh, and I also wanted to look at that that mechanism. So, you know, instead of me talking about it, let's just let's just go ahead and flip the camera and let's. Let's look at the pen. Let's look at its filling mechanism, how well it's made, and how well this pen writes, because this pen does write well. Okay, so we have the red and black pen BBS box that is standard for most of their pens with that magnetic enclosure. And unlike the last pen BBS pen I got, this one uh, did not get run over by a forklift during shipping. <laughs> this one arrived in wonderful shape. That other one did protect that pen. No problem with the pen, but the box was smushed. Uh, when you open it up, you will find instructions. That is an unusual thing for pen BBS pens or for a lot of pens really, uh, but this does come with instructions in Chinese and if, like me, you are Chinese challenged, they do also come in English, though I think the pictures were good enough. First, you start by taking off the cap. I love that. Take off the cap. I wonder uh, how many emails they've gotten. How do I get this pen open? You take off the cap. And when you're done, you put it back on. And that will also save you much frustration with your fountain pen. And in between, much instruction. But this is actually quite simple, and I think that will be even easier to demonstrate. But if you need a screenshot of that so you know how the pen works, obviously you can do that in English or in Chinese. So, very cool that is. And then let's open that back up. It doesn't, doesn't stay open. And we find the ocean uh, resin of the Pen BBS 500. Now, the ocean version of this pen is a purple pen, and depending on how I hold this in the light, you will see purple, violet, blue, kind of blue indigo violet uh, tones throughout this pen. It is, as you can see, a demonstrator, but it's a pretty dark, uh, deep purple, so it can be in certain light difficult to see what's going on inside that pen, but it is there, and it is a demonstrator pen. A couple of things that I really like about the pen. The band, I think, is nicely done and something you don't see on all their pens. It has the model number and the Pen BBS logo and then the Pen BBS name all uh, stamped into or engraved into uh, that band. And I think that looks quite good. There you go. Okay, you have that nice clip that you've seen on pens like the 480 and then you have a metal uh, finial, which looks quite good and is obviously quite reflective. As you can see, the kitchen has lots and lots of lights. And then you have the working end of the filling mechanism. And this pen is kind of interesting. It is a little bit, as you can see, a little difficult uh, to open that up. So let me show you what you do. And let me first take the cap off. When you take the cap off, you see that really wonderful uh, Pen BBS fine nib. I have great experience with their fine nibs, and I'm really more of a medium nib person. 
but I like their finds. And as you can see, it has good scrolling, engraving, all that good stuff, and then of course a, a plastic feed, but I like that. It's nicely done. There is the plastic section, which is comfortably shaped. It does have that stop to keep you from sliding down onto the nib and uh, is a good size uh, diameter. I'll put that up in the specifications. And then a trim ring that reads Shanghai and made in China. So uh, that's, that's unusual for a pin BBS pin. I think that looks good. And uh, just a nice looking pin overall. Let's go ahead and, and open this up. You can, if you find, for example, I think for someone with arthritis or something like that, uh, I think you might have trouble opening this up and this could be a deal breaker for some. You really uh, have to be able to grab a very small piece of metal to turn that, but it does have a saving grace. There is, of course, a silicon O-ring here on that section you could easily uh, just use a syringe or an eyedropper and fill this pen with ink. I'm gonna tell you that early because some of you may have that question and you could do that and it does hold a pretty good amount of ink from about there on up. So there is that possibility. And uh, let's just go ahead and disassemble this because I'm going to put some silicone on the threads. Uh, the wider ring there are two things here that you can turn. The wider ring opens the pin up so that you can clean it, maintain it, uh, put silicone on the pin, and I'm gonna do that here in just a second. But, let me just put that back on right quick, show you how it works. The uh, smaller piece of metal is actually your plunger. And as I said, it can be difficult to grip. I have to use and my fingernails. It's not hard to turn as long as you don't have it down too tight. Uh, you could use a little piece of rubber or silicone, like one of those jar, you know, those little jar opening things, and open it that way. But uh, it, it's easy enough once you get the hang of it. it Maybe a time or two, and then you've got it. You pull it back, and then about one turn, uh, kind of while kind of gently pulling back, will help it meet those threads, and then. It is the plunger. So, let me put that back on. What you would do, and we'll do this in a minute, is put that in the ink bottle, and mine meets with a bit of resistance on the first plunge, so know that and kind of go, ah, well, better that time, because I told you about it. <laughs> uh, but you push down, and it's a strong spring. Do you see that spring working? That's a nice thing about this being a demonstrator. Uh, you'll push that down, and it's a pretty good string, good tension on that and then don't just let it flop back. You'll make a mess. Uh, instead, slowly, now you know I'm double jointed, right? <laughs> uh, just slowly come back with that and the pen will fill. And you may need to do that uh, a few times to get a completely uh, full pen, but very simple mechanism. Like I say, that is a pretty good stiff spring. So, you know, uh, mind your P's and Q's while you're doing that. You don't wanna make a mess, but works effectively, I assume, you're going to see me fill it for the first time. I assume it works well because it seems to have a pretty good vacuum and uh, we'll see how that goes. Let me show you where I'm going to put the silicone grease. I may as well do this on camera in case you've never done this before. Now I'm using, this is from Goulet, I got this a while back. It uh, lasts a long time even with a lot of pens. Just get a little bit of silicone, don't don't go crazy, uh, but just line those threads, and I usually just kind of twirl it in my fingers like that, make sure it spreads pretty well. Again, you want to wipe down the excess, uh, but that's really all there there is to that, and then you screw that back on, and voila, you have siliconed your threads. I would do the same thing. I'm going to do that here, but I also want to make sure you can see that there's some there, but just a little, doesn't take a lot. I'm going to put that here as well. I do not want this pen to leak. And here, I think I have enough on that finger that I can kind of get that on those threads. 
There we go. And then I'll just simply screw that back in. Wipe my fingers, it might be a little bit easier to do, right? That outer ring is actually easier than you might think to do. There's not a lot of surface area, so it looks like it would just be really difficult, but it's it's really not that bad. Uh, you wouldn't want to overdo it anyway because you don't want to crack anything. And then, as I said, I just use my, my fingernails to kind of get a, a little bit of grip there, and that seems to work. And one turn, and we're back to where we started with a plunger. And that did start a bit more smoothly, so I think that silicone was a good idea. Just probably needed just a little bit more. There you go. So now we're going to fill up this pen. Okay, so the ink that I have chosen for this pen is Imperial Purple. This is uh, a uh, Birmingham ink or a Birmingham Pen Company ink, but it's before they started uh, making their own. So uh, this is something that was made in the UK. Uh, some of you can probably uh, decipher where that might might have been made, but it's a really nice purple, and I like it. It's what I have in my my Lamy 2000, and I thought it would suit this pen well. So of course, like the instructions say, are we gonna are we gonna read the instructions? I just put together a cart earlier, uh, following the instructions. Isn't that weird? Why would I do that? So you put it down into the ink. That that would be kind of like taking off the cap. Obviously, we're gonna put this into the ink, but you do want to make sure that you get it far enough. You're gonna worry about your grip and everything, but uh, don't worry about it. That's wipeable. Get it on down in there because that way you can make sure that you've got uh, your pen where it's going to properly uh, inhale that ink. And even though this is a demonstrator, it's not really going to show you much. So I'm just going to do this in a way that I have a better grip. And you just press that down, slowly bring it up. And it got, that got a really good amount of ink. I'm going to do it one more time, I think, is all. Because that yeah, that's impressive. I don't know that you can see it because it is such a dark resin, but that did a very good job of filling. That was very simple. So don't be intimidated by pens with plungers or unique filling systems. I would encourage you, uh, try different filling systems out. It's kind of one of the neat things about fountain pens is that you just have different ways of filling different pens. I'm going to follow the instructions which say to wipe the nib and close that. Now, do not push this back in. I uh, should have done that before I put the cap on, obviously. But turn that until it is loose again and then just screw it back in and you are good to go. Just make sure that you have unscrewed that plunger from the uh, the plunger knob or from the actual plunger so that it goes in without making a mess and that's it you have filled your pin bbs 500 now let's do a writing test all right let's see how this pen inks so now we've just filled it so it's going to be well saturated this is a very long can i get it in the camera a very long pen posted. It does post. It posts securely, but it is back heavy. Uh, it's just a, a long pen when you do that. So, pen BBS, 500, and this is a fine nib. And it's a steel nib, and it is a number six. And you know what I like about number six nibs. There is just a whole world of nib replacements, some of them from PBS, some of them from a myriad of other manufacturers. So uh, you've got tons of choices. And uh, I like that. I like that. As I mentioned, this is an Imperial Purple. And that is Birmingham Pen Company, but that is a, a discontinued ink. So you won't be able to just run out and grab that. But check out their, their current inks. They have been working hard and putting a lot out there. And, and I am a uh, fan. I have no affiliation. I get nothing for saying that except, you know, the enjoyment you get from sharing with other people when you found something you think is good and cool. 
Line variation, not a thing. These are hard steel nibs, uh, but very good riding nibs. Wetness, not too wet. You would think so because it seems really well saturated. And you know, I, I like when a pen is like that, that it, it well saturates your writing, no skipping or hard starting, and yet uh, isn't actually putting down too wet a line. So uh, pretty good for a fine, I think. All right, right, let's do a quick size comparison. Here is the Faber-Castell Loom, a much shorter pen, but similar in diameter. Love that pen, enjoy that. Uh, but a much shorter pen, but one that you may have some experience with. The Lamy 2000, another piston filler of a different sort, and that is a much shorter pen. Again, similar in diameter, very different grip section, obviously, but as you can see, a uh, little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. Then, uh, let's see here, another piston filler, the Twisby. And it is a bit, a bit shorter, maybe an eighth of an inch, I don't know. Uh, but shorter and very different grip section there too. A lot of variety in these pins today. And then similar in length, but not a piston filler, normal pist uh, converter, converter and uh, cartridge filler is the uh, Moon Man M800. Probably the closest of these pins in length, though you can't quite tell it because of the, the conical ends of the pin, but it is still a bit shorter. So a sizable pin. Let me just show you one of these. Uh, let's see. Let's try the... needs to be something I'll post. We'll do the Lamy 2000. Uh, when, just to give you an idea of posted length. See if that fits. Ah, it does. If you're familiar, you, if you've at least seen these in reviews, I'm sure the length posted is quite dramatic. So a uh, bit of a bit of a difference there. And uh, that's what I mean. It becomes a very long pin, a bit of a baseball bat. But the bigger, bigger deal is that it is uh, back heavy at that point. Just unposted your size comparison closes in but still quite let's see if I can get that quite a difference in length so if you're looking for a longer unposted pin that that is not too bad but check the dimensions uh, in this video to give you a better idea of uh, of what you can expect it's a great pin it's a great looking pin it's a bit different in style from some of their other pins and I like that. So the Pen BBS 500, my first impression is that I think I'm gonna like this pen. God bless you. Thank you for liking, sharing, uh, subscribing, all of that good stuff. Have a great week.